Hey guys, it's Carla. Today I'm painting a winter scene. I'm using an 8x10 canvas panel and acrylic paint. Um, today I've got white, phthalo blue, magenta, raw umber, and raw sienna. Now I've started with um, white and blue, a white and blue mixture. And the, the brushes I'm using are um, very old and very cheap, very worn out. Um, and I'm doing that on purpose because um, what I've realized is that if you, if you care too much about ruining your brushes, then it limits what you can do on the canvas. So, um, lately I've gotten to where I just, I really just want to use old worn out brushes when I can so that I can abuse them if I need to and I don't worry about it. And it just, it frees me up on, on the canvas to do, um, to do whatever I want with the brush and not have to, to worry about ruining it. So I've put in my sky and um, I'm gonna start on my mountain, my most distant mountain, which needs to be um, lighter in value than the mountain in front of it because when you see things in the distance, they're, um, they're lighter because there's more atmosphere between here and there. So um, that's one way that you can make things look more distant is to make them lighter. And um, the other way is to make them smaller. So lighter and smaller is what um, creates distance. Um, so I, I'm putting in this lighter mountain, this more distant mountain, and then I'll darken it and, and put in my bigger and closer mountain. The brushes I'm using are just um, um, a variety of sizes of um, angle brushes just synthetic angle brushes. I've found that they, they're more versatile, the, the angle brushes are more versatile because, you know, they've got the flat edge if you need that and they've got a point if you need that. And, um, and like I said, the fact that they're old and worn out allows you to, to use them however you want. Also, the paint that I use is, it's not, it's not craft paint. It's thicker than craft paint, but it's not heavy body either. It's kind of a student grade, I guess. Uh, for the most part, that's what I use. It, um, it flows better on the canvas and um, just easier to work with than than the heavy body and covers better than the um, craft paint. Now here I'm just uh, using just pure white and putting the snow on the mountains. Now um, notice that I keep reloading the brush because I really want to lay it on there in some places fairly thick. Um, because 
acrylic paint, when it dries, it kind of dulls down. Uh, white is really bad for that. So um, if you get it thick in places, then it stays pure white. As far as the size of the brush, just, you know, you may not be working on a, an eight by 10 canvas, you may have a different size. So you would need to adjust your brush sizes according to what, what size your canvas is. I've got my light source coming from the right, the right hand side. So that's where most of the snow is gonna be highlighted. So on the left side, I, I don't want, I don't wanna leave it blank or, you know, just blue, but I'm not putting quite as much snow on it as the right side so that it shows where the light's coming from. And I'm going to go ahead and do this whole mountain, even though the cabin will be covering up a lot of it. Um, I'm kind of making this up as I go, so at this point I'm not sure what part is going to be covered, so I just want to paint the whole thing and um, just in case, just in case it shows. And when you're painting the background like this, it's um, it's okay and it's good to to paint things that are eventually going to get covered up because it gives you more practice. Now over here, I'm putting a little um, body of water. And water is um, typically just the color of the sky because that's where the color comes from in water is just reflection so it's reflecting the color of the sky go ahead and start on my cabin and you can draw this out ahead of time but I'm just um, freehanding it and one of the great things about acrylic paint is that you can um, you know, like if I don't get the shape exactly right I can change it, paint over it or um, paint around it.
And right here, I'm just adding in a little bit of color, a little change in color so that it's not all solid. So I'm kind of going in like the direction that the logs would be. And I'll come back later and, and add even more texture and dimension. Now right here, this is the under the eave um, where it would be kind of shaded. So I'm just putting in some dark brown for that. lot in it or, uh, later but I'm just kind of showing myself where it's going to go I'm showing them the finished painting as your reference photo, but um, for me, I'm just kind of making it up as I go. So if I if I look like I don't know what I'm going to do next, it's because I don't. I'm thinking. <laughs> I had taken a break from YouTube. This is the first video I've posted in about three months because um, because of personal reasons, but I found a way to make it work, and so I'm back. Hopefully you guys are still there. I know it seems odd to paint um, purple or blue or something um, where there's snow is going to be, but you have to have a base color, like a it's kind of a shadow color, so that when you put your snow in, you've got texture. And uh, a purplish color, I think, is pretty for snow, um, but you can use blue. As well if, if that's what you prefer. If you've not tried painting with um, old brushes that you don't care about, you really should give it a try. It's, it's very freeing. It allows you to do so much more and for most things you can use old brushes and they work just fine it's just really handy to be able to abuse them if you want to uh, and they're also very handy for clouds. So this is, like I said, a synthetic angle brush. And for each cloud, I'm starting with the, the top edge because I want that to be the brightest. And then I'm just kind of scrubbing in 
the rest. You can't do that if you're worried about your brushes. So you've got to get old brushes that you don't care about and, and just scrub away. It makes very pretty clouds. So the top edge is bright. You've got a lot of paint up there and then just kind of scumble down kind of until you run out of paint and it just fades off into the sky. Obviously I'm trying to think of what I want to do next. So I'm mixing up the color I want my trees to be uh, because even though I'm putting a lot of snow on them, the, the tree color is going to show. So I'm putting in some trees right here that are kind of uh, on the other side of this little hill. And I want them to be different sizes. Um, try to avoid lining them up like fence posts or uh, you know making them all the same height and you want to have some variety there so it looks more natural but I'm just tapping this in with a very small um, angle brush and if you're working on a bigger canvas then your brush doesn't have to be so small but these are tiny trees, so I'm using a tiny brush. Tap, tap. Um, these are evergreens, obviously. And they're kind of shaped like Christmas trees, but try not to make like a, per a perfect triangle. Just um, give them some character. Now we're starting on the snow. And you can make it as smooth as you want or you can make it very textured. Sometimes there's a, a very smooth blanket of snow on the ground and sometimes critters have walked through it and it's textured so either way works.
Speaking of critters, it's my schnoodle. So I want to make sure that I don't cover up all of my base coat because that's my shadow color for my snow. This was a last minute decision to um, add our sequels, but it really adds to it. Now the snow on the trees is the same as making the trees themselves, except you just don't put as much because you don't want to cover up all of your green. So you're just kind of tapping it on the top of the branches.
and now I'm starting on my big tree and it just goes off the side of the canvas So down here at the bottom, I want to use kind of some of that uh, greenish color to give kind of a shadow around the tree. Just very lightly, I added a little bit of white to it and very lightly I'm kind of blending into that snow. Careful not to cover up all of your green tree when you're putting this snow on. Especially toward the bottom because it's not going to catch quite as much snow. Gotta have a chimney. Putting out a little bit of yellow and orange um, for I mean, just a little dot of each because all I need it for is the window, the for the light in the window. And I didn't mix it up real well because I, I want it to be, I want to clearly see orange and yellow in there. And then with not much paint on the brush, I'm putting a little reflection of it in the, a little glow in the snow. Now I'm just coming back now and kind of darkening some of my dark lines. Just make them a little more obvious. Yours may be dark enough already.
Now right here I'm attempting to put some smoke coming out of the chimney, but I've got quite a bit of snow on the mountain behind so it's it's not going to be real obvious. If you have a darker background for it, then yours will, will show up better. And I want to put a little bit of snow on the top of the chimney, just laying there. And a little on the windowsill. So that's it guys. Um, now I did go back and um, later and darken some of some areas in the mountain with some of my dark green tree color. Um, I think that's the only little touch ups I did. I may have brightened up some of my whites but um, so this is the time to just go back and just darken some darks, whiten some whites and um, work with it until you're happy with it. So thanks for watching guys. Bye.